And we'll have the latest from Moscow and analyze the impact of sanctions both on Russia and the knock-on effects for the rest of the world. But first, here's our international correspondent, Ola Girin. By night, they defend the capital. Skies full of fire. These Ukrainian troops are still holding off Russian forces. Their president calling on the invaders to lay down their arms. Drop your weapons and get out of here. Do not believe your commanders. Do not believe your propagandists. Just save your lives and go. And in a Kiev children's hospital, a young victim of Europe's newest war lies between life and death. He's just 13, and doctors tell us as his family tried to flee, they came under fire. It's unclear from which side. Uh, the smallest brother was killed, unfortunately. Uh, this boy has uh, injuries of uh, face and also uh, injuries of sp uh, spine. Uh, it's very difficult to say at this moment what is the prognosis, but we will try to do everything to save uh, this child. Here at Okhmadet Hospital, the largest paediatric centre in Ukraine, Staff are used to battling disease. Now they have to adjust to war on their doorstep. Most of the patients have been moved to the basement for safety reasons. There was another air raid siren just as we arrived. Now doctors here say they have enough supplies for the moment, but the World Health Organization is warning that if the situation in Kiev gets worse, oxygen supplies could start to run out. And just outside, desperately ill children wait, with their worried mothers, to be transferred to Poland for cancer treatment no longer available here. Tom is uh, six years old. Little Archiom must endure a risky journey with his mother, Marina. I'll be frank, it's, I, I'm scared, but I, I can see another way to escape, so we have to do this. But no escape today in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Military experts say it looks like Russia is using cluster bombs, which are banned by many countries. This is a residential area with no military objects. Here, a factory of some kind, now destroyed. It was a relentless bombardment of a major city as peace talks were beginning. This was the reception committee for Russian troops in the port city of Berdyansk in the east. Shouts of go home. Back in Kyiv, the air raid sirens were wailing again. And some were rushing for the railway station, including this group of students from India. We don't know what's going to happen next, but the only thing is that we are going to go to home and we're trying our best to go back to home, that's it. There have been reports of foreign students not being allowed on trains. But in this time of war, hopes all will be treated equally. In these hard times, I just hope it doesn't matter who's Indian, who's Pakistani, Russian, Ukrainian. We all are just people. We have certain human rights. So I guess in these hard times, we should just help each other and cooperativeness and that's all. Many are carried to the station by fear for their children, for their city and the lives they led until last week. Inside, it was all too much for this beloved pet. And already there are queues for food. Some wondering how long it will be before supplies start to run out. Day five of the invasion and Ukraine still resists. But there are fears this city could be put under siege. And once again, darkness brings new danger in the capital. 
this time a strike on a radar centre. The city hunkers down for another night, knowing there could be worse to come. Orla Giron, BBC News, Kyiv. Well, the UN says more than half a million people have fled Ukraine since the invasion began last week. Many are travelling to Poland, which borders the west of the country. Our special correspondent, Fergal Keen, reports from the Ukrainian city of Lviv, close to the Polish border, on the growing refugee crisis. To the edge of desperation and beyond. In a bewildering crisis the women and the children of Ukraine, fleeing their country. You will not be allowed, the policeman shouts to the men on the stairwell, women and children only. Tempers fray. Back and forth go the arguments and pleas. The police move to help those allowed to board. So the women and children are being pulled from the crowd on the stairs now so that they can board the train. The police again are outnumbered but they are doing their best. I've seen them go down there into the crowds and try and calm people but it's very very difficult given the volatility of the situation. I saw you in the, the queue. What, what do you feel? What's happening here? It's awful. It's very bad. What age is your baby? One year. He's very scared. Of course. Of course. The foreign students and workers here find themselves without family help far from home. And if they're men, they must wait until women and children are evacuated. What is it like for you, this? Well, it's uh, really stressful, you know. As you can see, I'm a bit nervous. I want to get on the train, but unfortunately, I can't. And my visa was supposed to come out tomorrow, but I had to leave as fast as I can. So I just had to pack my stuff and leave. The UN has warned of a fast deteriorating situation as tens of thousands flee towards Western Europe. Dr. Mohammed Nasinin is a British medic trying to leave with his family. Here we just come, every people panic because you have bad situation here, and we come to try to catch it, but we saw how people, everyone, they want to go to run. This is what he's run from the Russian shelling of Kharkiv. <coughs> and this is the voice of a young woman in the city, terrorized by shelling close to her apartment. In here. We're just eating like a bit of croissant. We met Doha from Morocco as she waited for a train. I cried. I cried so much. And I just want to go home, really. I'm not safe anymore here. I left everything. I left my studies. I Just pray with us, guys. Thank you so much. On platform six, a father's farewell to his infant son. What cannot be held must be let go. Until another day. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Lviv.